Today, we're going to create an interactive treasure chest blueprint. This chest will not only add a touch of adventure to your game, but also allow players to collect items from it. We'll go through the process of setting up a chest model, animating the lid open, and implementing the item collection system. By the end of this tutorial, you will have a fully functional treasure chest that can be used in various game scenarios. Let's get started and feel free to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching Coded Row. What I'm going to do is create a folder and I'll call this chest just for the sake of this tutorial, but you can play this wherever your chest blueprints will go. And I'll right click, go to the blueprints class and create an ACF chest BP. So I'll create a child of this ACF chest BP and I'll call this treasure chest tutorial. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up the treasure chest tutorial blueprint, which is a child of ACF chest BP, as it says here on the top, right? And what I'm going to want to do is actually just replace the static mesh with a treasure chest one that I have. I use Cinti assets because I personally just really like them. The low poly look is very appealing to me. And for this case, I'll need to add two static meshes and this helps if they're separate. So Cinti allows you to have a treasure chest that is the bottom piece. So I'll do this SM underscore prop chest 03. And then I will go ahead and click add in another static mesh and I'll look for the chest 03 lid, which is right here. So I'm just gonna try to align it as best as I can. So this looks perfect to me, yeah. So I'll call this, I'll go ahead and call this lid and then I'll hit compile and save. And now what you're gonna wanna do is go to the event graph and first we're gonna try to get that lid animation to work. So what we're gonna wanna do is add an event, which is gonna be on local interacted by pawn. And now we're gonna want to add some animations to this. So let's go ahead and add a timeline and I'll call this timeline open lid. When I double click on my open lid, I can select the length and hit add a track. And in this case, I'll wanna add a float track. So I'll do a three second animation and that might be a little long, but you can feel free to adjust this to whatever you want. And then I'll click this plus sign to add track and I'll add a float track. And now I'll just hold shift and left click in two places. The first one, I'll start it at zero and zero. So the time will be zero and the value will be zero. For the time, I'm gonna do three seconds because I'm just gonna leave it open and this will move all the way to the end. Let me go ahead and change this length to three actually, which is why there was some open white space here. And then I will make this value negative 100. So I'll make this value here negative 100. I'm gonna right click this and select auto. And then for the first one, I'll also right click and select auto, just so it'll have a bit of a curved animation so it looks smoother. And then I'll hit control save. And the reason why I had this to be negative 100 for the value in our event graph, we're gonna update this. Actually, let me go back and organize this a bit. So for the open lid, you're gonna see it says new track. I'm gonna go ahead and rename this to open lid and I'll hit control save. And now when we go to the event graph, this is actually our open lid. So that negative value is gonna take effect in our set relative rotation. We're gonna update this after the user interacts, it's gonna play an animation. And we're gonna update this to set relative rotation. And we're gonna select the lid because we're only rotating the lid in this case. And now what I'm gonna wanna do is right click on this new rotation and split struct pin. And in my case, I'm gonna wanna adjust the X axis, which is the roll. Let me hit compile and save. And when I go to my viewport, I basically just want this to, to open up just like this. And as we talked about in my Unreal Beginner tutorials, the X axis is our red. So the red color represents our X axis. And since we added the set relative rotation, we'll be adjusting the X axis on the rotation. So if this is set to negative 100, this is how the end will look. And you can actually change the value from negative 100 to whatever you want, but I'll reset it to the default position of zero, zero, zero. And in the event graph, I'll connect my open lid to my X so that once the animation is played at three seconds, it'll finish and set new rotation X to negative 100. I'll add a do once here. I'll just do a play sound at location. The reason why I do a do once is because if you don't, it'll keep repeating the sound until it's done and it can get a little annoying. So I'll do something like a chest open creak sound. So I'll go ahead and click save and compile. Now what we're gonna wanna do is in our ACF procedural storage, which is already in our child BP of our ACF chest, we can add whatever materials we want or items we want. So in this case, you can add a certain minimum item count or maximum item count to add some randomness to it. And in this case, let's add a shield and we'll also add a bullet and a health bar. I'll actually delete the bullet in this case. And I'll change this to, um, and I'll add this to my ACF 2H sword. And I'll just want one. And for the health potions I'll, or the health buff BP, I'll add five of those. And let's go ahead and add, and I'll go ahead and add a chest piece. And I'll add some currency as well. So I'll change this to 5,000. And now I'll add my treasure, treasure chest. Don't forget to compile and save. That's really important. Now in my demo scene, I'll go ahead and add my treasure chest, my treasure chest tutorial 
in the scene. You can place this however you want. And when I hit play, I'm going to go up to my chest and you'll notice that on the right, it'll say I can interact with my with the chest using the E key. So I'll hit E and it's going to play that sound that we set and it'll have all these things in it. So it has 10 wood, our offhand sword, our torso test, health buff, two hand sword and ACF sheet. So if you notice that our chest had some extra items in it, it's because that our item generation rules state that we get an item dot material of a rarity common and a random item dot weapon, which is also a common rarity. So if I go ahead and delete this item generation rules and save and compile and go ahead and open the chest again, you're going to notice these are the only four items I actually added to my to my chest. So that wood is gone now. And that's pretty much how you set up your treasure chest. Thanks for watching Code is Row. Like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what tutorial you want to see next. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.